everyone, this is Chris Keys from PremierGuitar.com, hanging out at the Ryman, Nashville, Tennessee. My good friend Mike. Mike, how you doing? I'm great, Chris. How you doing, man? Very well. Thanks for having Mike me. Mike is part of Russian Circles, one of the third, one of the three members of Russian Circles. Uh, he's going to talk to us about his gear. First up is this Les Paul Custom. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, this is an 85 Custom I picked up at a friend's shop in Chicago. Uh, rock and roll vintage, cool spot. One of those guitars that the minute you pick it up, it starts kind of vibing with you. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, it, it's a really resonant guitar. So you, you feel it resonate through your body. And once you start playing it, it's hard to switch back to others. So this has been my main guitar since picking that up a few years and, ago. And uh, pickups? Um, I recently became a fan of the Lawler Imperials. Um, I have the Imperial High Wound in this guy. Okay. And then the neck is a standard Imperial. I've we recorded last year or so, and I used this guitar, which had those Tim Shaw pickups naturally. It just sounded so warm with the lower output pickups uh -huh. that I changed all my pickups out of the high gain market and down to just vintage style, and I'm really happy here. Well, the one thing with I'm it. sorry to interrupt, but the one thing I uh, always appreciate about your tone live and in the recording is that it is there's clarity to it. You've always taken approach to that, whether it's the pickups or your gear pedals or amps that you've always wanted to, to be really while there's a lot going on there's songs where you loop and stuff and building uh soundscapes you're always able to hear note definition cool. and that's that's definitely a thing that i, I when i think of mike sullivan russian circles it's what oh I think. cool thanks man that's the name of the game is balancing clarity with warmth so it's finding that the little channels in there where you can the guitar can sit and yeah. you can still hear arpeggios and notes and the chord not just a barrage of noise coming at you, you know, which <laughs> yeah. can easily happen, you know, especially with looping. You want to have notes set in the right, sit in the right place. And so this one has taken place. I know that you were a big fan of the 57 custom reissues. Yeah, yeah. So those ones are just resting uh, right now? Uh, yeah, I love those. I don't know if it's the maple top on this or what it is, but this one actually sounds better. Whereas that's all one slab body mahogany. Mm -hmm. This one just happens to, I don't know, have a little more top end, probably from the maple but it's a little lighter too and just feels more comfortable playing live and there's a what about strings how do you what do you run for a string uh, gauge i use uh those nyxls the right. diadarios uh 11 to 56 on this guitar are you guys are you guys still uh, or are you tuning to a b still uh it's a kind of a weird mixture right now this is st uh usually uh a dad gad variant where okay. it'd be like c sharp g sharp d G, A, C sharp. And then occasionally I'll use the drop pedal, the Digitech drop, to shift the whole guitar down one full step. So it ends up being B, then what, F sharp, respectively, and C, and so on. But um, yeah, so this one usually hangs around in the C sharp. Kind of low. the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, they're all, these poor guys, I put them all over the place, so. And uh, picks, got one right here. Is it uh, one that you prefer, or is it just one you pick up? Yeah, I, I love these actually. Um, it's the Jazz Three, you know, the Dunlops. Super small. Yeah, I, I got like a uh, Andy Timmons pedal a few years ago, and it came with one of these little guys in there. Oh, really? And I was like, what, what? How do you use this thing? And I fell in love with it just for you know, fast tremolo picking and mm -hmm. really going for it. It's way more ergonomic, so. This is the carbon, if we're going to tech talk, let's tech talk Let's it do up. it. Okay, uh, this is carbon fiber and it's got the max grip situation happening mm -hmm. where you, can, you can't drop this thing. You're shredding. Yeah, yeah. I don't move more than a foot the whole night, but say I move two feet, I wouldn't drop it. I, I feel safe with this guy, but it's a cool pick. I, I like having grip on there, so this And you like the material? The and uh, you know, because different, you know, people over, do overlook pick in the pick materials that yeah, they can use. Totally, so and you, especially you recording that. under the microscope, each different pick does yeah. sound differently. Um, this one, I'm cool with the way this one sounds, yeah. you know, so yeah, I love this thing though. And let's move over to this one in the shadows. Is this yeah. uh, a backup or is this tuned to something different? Uh, it's tuned to something different. This tour, it's each tour, guitars get thrown into different tunings yeah. depending on what's the set, you know. Um, this is actually set to a similar to Dadgad but with a drop A, so A, A, D, G, A, D. Um, and is that more for like older stuff or stuff off Guidance and it's like got, Memorial? Yeah, one song off Guidance for playing this tour is, uh, that's set up for Africa, okay. that's an A, so that's just, grab that guy for that one and um, yeah, it sounds, it's similar pickups, it doesn't have Lawlers, it has the original Tim Shaw's, but 
I prefer the Lollers, but again, for this tour, it's a smash and grab. You don't yeah. know what, you know, until like a day or two before tour. What am I going to grab for this outing here? But that's a great guitar. It's an 80, 81, I believe, and picked that up in uh, Southside Guitars in uh, Brooklyn, cool shop. But yeah, that's a similar era, similar sound overall to this guy, aside from the pickups. And anyone that's known or seen you guys live or read your interviews or even seen our last rig rundown knows that you're a big proponent or a big fan of the meat smoke from Varellin. Sure, yeah, absolutely. I see it nowhere to be, although it's on the other side for Brian, but we'll we'll ignore that. Yeah, so yeah, what, yeah. what's with the all-fender setup? Um, let's, let's do this. Um, you know what? Last tour in Europe, I was using a Varellin and so many people and bands have been in there changing tubes and preamp tubes and, mm -hmm. you know, God knows what's happened to it. And uh, at one point, I had to switch out to a bass band as a backup for a show. And I love, I still do love the Meat Smoke. It's a great amp, but there's something about the, the voicing of the Super Bass Man where it just suits the guitar for, for what I'm doing, yeah. my application. It really worked well for, you know, the more I investigated with it, investigated the different tones, it's really great for it's a very dialed in, clean tone. I was gonna say, so this I imagine will be something very clean. That's why I'm kind of in love with fenders just because the amount of headroom you can get. Yeah. All the distortion comes from the pedals. But there's some songs that just need a loud, crisp, clean, absolute, you know, no dirt whatsoever. Yeah. And the fenders allow you to do that. And if you're flying into Hong Kong or God knows where for one off, you know, um, they're more likely to find a bass man and a twin reverb and get comfortable and dial it in within minutes yeah. and be off to the races. And so then this one's, uh, they're both running at the same time? Yeah, they're all going mono essentially. Okay. Um, and the idea is three, there's two twins, one stage right as well. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to have the twins set up differently. So the front of house can play with a brighter twin setting. And okay. a low, I like a lot of low end on my side. Okay. Whereas stage right has a brighter sound. So our bassist Brian, our drummer Dave, they use that for their monitor. And against that sits nicely against the bass lower frequencies. Yeah. That way it's, you know, no one step on each other's toes. Yeah. Over here I'm a guitar low end fest though. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a sucker for low end. So hence the eight by 10. And this, the bass band by nature is pretty low. Yeah. So I kind of crank the treble on that. And I couldn't be happier. I really dig in the setup. Do, have you done anything to the to the heads or the combo in the sense of maybe different speakers or tubes that pe pe uh, you know people right. really overlook sometimes how much a change in a preamp or a po uh, power tube can really affect the character of an amp? Sure. Um, these two I left alone. Okay. Like Fender was kind enough to send them out my way, and they sounded great out of the box. This poor twin stage right. <laughs> I got that on Craigslist. It came in beaten up, and I just, I'm just changing tubes as if it's like a like, like grade school set or something. I've uh, definitely lost. It's it, the tone has changed. It's the loudest twin I've ever seen. What's currently in there now? Do you know? Um, Six I, I did some tube swapping, but I have no clue what the hell I was up to. I just <laughs> like Stevie wondered it, just kind of like Stevie utter milk and a cow, just kind of like oh, it fit. God knows what, but it's loud as hell. It, but it sounds different than this one in a cool way. So the two stack up nicely when All paired. Right. Well, I mean, and what about speakers in this cab? Just standard 10 Yes, inch? Yeah, standard situation. Um, I haven't really pursued speaker swapping. I'm sure it'd be useful, but at this point, I just kind of hover around what the factory gives you, you know, and just rip, yeah, the let it rip. Ampeg uh, designed it so, I mean, yeah, you know, probably I, did it right. That's what I figured with some of these older companies, they've been doing it so long, they have a lot figured out, you know? Yeah. And they got it pretty right on out of the gate, you know? So, absolutely. Uh, something to be said for that. Now I want to talk pedals. Can we do that? Sure. Let's do it. All right, we're down over your pedal board. Mike, walk us through it. Sure. Um, I guess I'll start from the guitar end where we take it through towards the amp. And you're a cable guy? I'm sorry? You're a cable versus a wireless, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of old school when it comes mm -hmm. to everything. So, uh, I feel good having a I'm not a, I don't run a jump around on stage. God yeah. help us if, if I was. Um, the first thing I go into is the Digitech drop pedal. Again, I may have mentioned that's good for shifting tunings. And also there's an octave option on there, which is really useful for, for some songs. So I put that before the tuner just to make sure the tuner is picking up the right. Cause sometimes this drop pedal can get bumped. You might be in the wrong interval setting. Oh, okay. So I put that before the tuner. 
Do you notice, Perry asked, uh, when we're setting up, if there's any latency issues because of the pedal transposing a tuning? Right, it's not so much latency issues, but the further down you go, each interval, you lose signal and clarity a little bit. It sounds a little, not glitchy, but a little digitized or something's up. But um, if you're only going, you know, a few steps down, that's pretty useful, you know. And is I, it, I don't have any complaints. And is it something you just hit on and it goes to that tuning, or do you have to be on it like a momentary switch? Uh, you can do either. I okay. just push it and, and leave it set. alone. Got you. And pray for it works. Yeah, yeah. And then like, <laughs> we go on the next song and like, look at Brian, like, you want to tune to the right song, asshole? And then I realize <laughs> I didn't turn my pedal off and say, Give him like a tip I, of the I, I owe you a beer. I got you. <laughs> it happened to sound check. So hopefully that won't happen for a while. And then. The volume pedal, the Dunlop, the volume pedal that should have been out for years, I feel like. They knocked it out of the park with Why this. Why do you say that? I've gone through so many volume pedals every tour. I use it a lot. So when other devices use a string contraption, oh, yeah. and it just breaks so frequently. And we're on tour, and God knows where, Europe or wherever, you can't just go into Guitar Center, you mm -hmm. know, and grab a new one. So that's been kind of a godsend just for reliability. So you're more on the volume on your pedal board versus like uh, with the guitar, yeah. or you do both? Uh, I do primarily with on the board. I'll use the, the knob on the guitar mainly just for like feedback control and usually I'm, I'm pretty preoccupied that this is handy for just bringing things <laughs> down. Cool, let's bump it up. Voila. So yeah, that's a cool pedal though. It's simple, but important. Alrighty. Uh, moving along. Every guitar player should have an EVH pedal on there. So phase 90, it's a, I need a phase pedal and that you know, serves a purpose. Um, One knob too, you can't mess that up. Yeah, you know what, it sounds great. I've tried other phasers and others are great, but that works great for me. Um, that goes towards the uh, Fuzz Factory and that's a gnarly, it is what it is, you know. Uh, <laughs> so it's, if you can tame it, it's a really cool pedal. So I kick that on here and there. And then from there, it goes into this Keeley uh, True Bypass Looper. And I use that to turn on and off all my gain, which oh. is two Bogner pedals, like the Wessex Overdrive and the Burnley Distortion. So those are primarily always engaged. I just use this to kick them on or off. Okay. Occasionally, I'll turn one off just for, you know, to dial back the gain a little bit. Because you guys do build your, your, your vibes and uh, sounds, but there are points where it is real direct and real immediate too. Yeah, exactly. So that gives you more freedom just to go from one peak to another, you know, to like a... Bogner's amps kill, but um, these pedals themselves actually have uh, like Neve transformers yeah, exactly. or designs yeah, or something? Yeah, it's a collaboration with Rupert Neve. Yeah. And um, they're really smooth, you know, I'm gonna say it again, warm. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's the, the most game. important <laughs> thing about a rig rundown is warmth. But they're they're great pedals. I've tried a lot of different pedals in that position. And that is the best fit for me, I found. And uh, let's see, those go through, after that is a series of boosts. Um, I use this micro amp. That's great just for, there's no coloration really, it just jumps up. So you want to you have a part, you want to bring it up a little bit without it being a noticeable tonal change. Mm -hmm. That's a great immediate switch to that. Uh, the EP Booster, I picked that up this tour because a micro amp broke on me at a show. I couldn't pick up another, so I grabbed the EP Booster, which does color the tone slightly, but I was very fond of the way it sounded, yeah. so I just leave it on all the time now. Oh, okay. It's, it's so true about that pedal. Like The minute you have it on, you don't want to take it off. Um, so that's just kept its place there, fought in to stay. Um, then I have this AC booster also, which is good just for another option to go overboard for when you have the, you know, Bogner's going, but you want to go, you know. Just a little further. Yeah, yeah, but not a huge volume jump, but still take a little, a tone shift, a little turn. That's good for that. Um, from there, we go to two delay pedals. Um, the, the Nemesis. The Source Audio pedal, that's a really cool pedal that's saved my ass recently. You can save eight different presets. Mm -hmm. I think more if you get into the guts yeah, of it they have and a, go they online. Have an app and yeah, exactly. You can really dive in. But there's some crazy far out options for delays. But just for song to song, getting the tempo as accurate as possible without tapping it. You know, some of those delays you don't have room for, you know, to be off any any, you know, amount. So 
that's a great pedal just to like mid song you can shift through there and change the delay settings and go to something you know is going to work for the, each song uh then we have the strymon dig pedal i like digital delays i like it to be the exact same repeat each time you're in the minority i think with that yeah. people are fascinated with uh analog delays yeah i mean they're you know? cool they're great uh just for yeah, again my ears my preference i like it to be the exact same same thing especially if you're doing a long clean passage and you want that u2 type the edge repeating delay mm -hmm. that's something about a digital delay is cooler for those longer time yeah. patterns another cool thing about these Strymon delay pedals is the favorite yeah so similar to the nemesis if you're riffing out the longer delay crazy delay setting you push the favorite and go back to another setting and just saves their ass we can go to from crazy long delays to a tight quick slap back or a shorter more forgiving delay and then that goes into the flint the strymon flint uh, reverb tremolo pedal that's a cool two-in-one jobber the uh, tremolo is cool it sounds great and then the most usable thing for myself is the reverb. Yeah, I was going to ask if That's you use really it from cool. the amp or if it's coming like a combination. Sure, I, I use the reverb always on the twins because it sounds so good, but you can go to kind of, you know, other world territory here. With the 80s setting on the delay, it just gives you long cascading yeah, delays, yeah. so that's a cool feature. You guys go cave-like sometimes. Yeah, and it's good for that. And Krangs. If you have a longer set and you're going, going to town, on a interlude, that's a fun pedal for that. So, but I use it usually for the 60s setting, just for a nice spring reverb emulation, and that's my go-to reverb. Are you using the trem side? I see the, the knob here in the left turn yeah. almost all the way down. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been moved around because the last few shows I haven't used a tremolo, so that's been knocked a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> so I'm not really too concerned about gotcha. that. But uh, yeah, that's a great tremolo. That has a very musical quality to it. All right. Uh, going on, we have the Head Rush 2. I use that for all live looping. Dedicated just for that. I can do other cool things. You're but missing some knobs up top there. That thing's <laughs> a great pedal, but they break. They're, they, they, <laughs> every tour I go through several of those. I robbed this one off Brian's board years ago. And for whatever reason, this one is a trooper. It keeps fighting, man. Um, so yeah, that's, again, a cool pedal, but it does have its issues. For example, when you have it for extended looping, mm -hmm. there's a quality, like a signal loss a little bit, about 10%. So I use this two knob pedal here. I think Saturn Works did that, um, but that's a mixer, a two knob mixer. So there's four outputs from this head rush. So one knob controls my drive signal, and the other one is purely just the level of the loops. So if there's any discrepancy of the loop or I want to bump a loop up more than I'm given uh, with the head rush, I have the ability to do that. So that's been that's been useful big time. And then last is the And are they independent of each other? Like those controls? Yeah, I, I didn't cut either one and it's okay. you know still going. You know, or whichever you prefer to mm -hmm. go. Um, but it is a nice little cheat I found that if it weren't for the multiple outputs on the head rush wouldn't be possible. But that's a cool foresight on their part. Uh, and then lastly here is the, the Jam Man, and that is standard operation, cool just for help pad out interludes or certain songs. If there's a drone going on, mm -hmm. I'll pull that up and throw that in there, and it just helps. As a three-piece, you kind of find ways to give it more uh, depth, you know. So having a cool drone in the background here or there. It's a little easier when it's some are pre-recorded. So that's how you that's how you use and both justify having two loopers on your pedal. Yeah, I mean I much prefer the the use for live looping of this one. I I've tried every looper out there, and this is the most immediate, responsive one that I found. And I'm not crazy about live looping with a Digitech Jam Man. It's it's useful, but I rarely will live loop on that device. And uh, yeah. Each tour is different, different pedals come and go, but for this one, this is where I'm at right now. If you could only take one pedal right now and use it for a gig, what one would you have to have, aside from the loopers? Yeah, I mean, that, that's like, that, that's the showstopper. So uh, with that, that one out, you know what? Which one do you need? I like, I like to have a lot of dirt. You know, for our show, I mean, this, this is the whole thing, you need it all, but you know, I like having, this would change if you asked me five minutes from now, but I like having <laughs> a nice wet, 
reverb going on. So you just play clean and just it really fills in all the cracks. So it sounds really, like the Flint Strymon's the winner. It, it was, maybe it's a two in right one, now. that's why. It's a loophole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sneaking in another one. But yeah, I, I like that pedal a whole lot. But they're all, I don't know. So, they're all cool and who cares at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, it's just. Well, we well, do. That's well, what we're, we're doing. Whatever, this. whatever device works for the <laughs> application, you know, like, they're all yeah. cool and they happen to work for what I'm doing. But well, yeah. Mike, I appreciate it. Thanks uh, for cutting your sound check short for doing this. Oh, it, yeah, people can't see it, but they can hear it. People are coming in. They're going to play in short time so appreciate it this is chris keys for another rig rundown from your guitar cool don't forget to sign up for pg perks your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on premierguitar.com